A fire destroys a Clarksville home. I'm News 2's Joe Avery. I'll tell you how everyone made it out safely. High school football season kicks off in just a couple weeks. I'm News 2's Joe Avery. I'll show you how coaches are using technology to keep players safe. The man in that surveillance video smashed out this window, knocked over a display case, and then put a chain around this ATM. But when he tried to get away, the chain snapped because the ATM was bolted to the floor. A quick thinking teacher saves a middle school student from choking on a hot dog. Live. Joe, not a bad assignment for you tonight, huh? Not bad at all, Sam. As you can tell behind me, this is a massive crowd downtown making this the place to be tonight. Now I'm standing about 300 to 350 feet inside this cave underground. I can tell you it was a challenge just to get this far there. They have a little saying over here at Station Camp High. It goes, once a bison, always a bison. Well, tonight the bison community is showing a little love to one of their own. That's Gallatin police officer Kevin Thomas. Now this proposed legislation by State Senator Reginald Tate and State Rep Brenda Gilmore basically singles out pit bulls as vicious, no matter how the animal acts. When Tennille Davenport stopped home for lunch Monday afternoon, she had no idea someone else was inside. I was very fortunate that my wife didn't get hurt, you know. Her husband, Matthew, says she was startled by a noise in the back. And there's a, a lady in, in my daughter's bedroom and she asked her what she was doing and the lady said she was just chilling and my wife said, no, not in my house or not. His wife stayed cool, too. She called 911. Police say the intruder was this woman, a Lexus officer. She took off running through the backyard. It didn't take police long at all to catch up with officer. They arrested her just around the corner and in her possession, a handgun and several other items taken from the home. The next morning she was able to go to the police station and identify all of her stuff. The Davenports were lucky. Police recovered all their things, but their new TV was damaged in the burglary. This is where she entered the house and that's where she brought the TV out of the house. Davenport says he can't understand why someone would do this to his family. It's frustrating. You go to work every day and work for what you've got and then somebody that don't work comes try to steal it from you, you know. He's just thankful his kids weren't home at the time. That could have went worse. Joe Avery, Nashville's News 2. Oh, nice! I like it! Yeah. Three-year-old Hunt Hollis shows off his high-energy dance moves. March! And full head of curly hair. He has fantastic hair. In February 2011, he was diagnosed with mitochondrial disease, a genetic disorder where the mitochondria and cells fail to produce enough energy for cell or organ function. When Hunt was diagnosed with mitochondrial disease, we had never heard of that before, and we didn't know what that meant. University of Alabama film student Shelby Haddon approached the Hollis family with an idea for a documentary. So my husband and I talked about it and decided, you know, if we could do this documentary and raise awareness, for mitochondrial disease and educate people about the disease, then it was something we definitely wanted to do. <laughs> Haddon spent weeks with Team Hunt chronicling everything. She went to every um, therapy appointment, doctor's visit. She spent the night with us one night. I finished with about 37 hours of footage. That footage became not a statistic. The 36 minute film premieres Thursday at the Franklin Theater. So I'm hoping that by getting exposure, people will know about the disease and know what it's like for parents with kids with mitochondrial disease as well as other special needs. The story may be about her family, but Hunt's mother Ellen says the message is universal. This could be anybody's story that deals with anything that's difficult, um, but it's just what you do with that situation. <laughs> Joe Avery, Nashville's News 2. Okay. Spotting a familiar face in a sea of holiday travelers? He's somewhere. Not an easy task. Are you ready to see your dad? For Tiffany Cedarberg and her six-month-old baby boy, staying patient might be even harder. This is definitely trying my patience. Her husband, Marine Russell Cedarberg, a 25-year veteran. In 2003, he almost lost his legs when he was crushed by a tank in Iraq. Now he's home from his final deployment in Afghanistan.
Finally. He doesn't know what to do. You're not on a computer monitor. And five tiny fingers. Finally touching the father he's really only known through Skype. It's like stepping out of a dark room in the rising sun. Making Harper's first Christmas one to remember. I'd say he's pretty happy. I'm happy. Joe Avery. It almost feels weird having all three of us here. Nashville's News 2. <laughs> he's so happy. Surrounded by praying hands and bathed in candlelight, a yellow lily sits on the bus stop bench, marking where 41-year-old Robert Mitchell last slept. He was a beautiful person, a beautiful heart, was a good person. He just had some, some bad things happen, was on some bad luck, and was trying to work out some personal issues. Unbeknownst to his family, Mitchell had been living on the streets. In the early morning hours of October 18th, he was shot and killed as he slept. Metro Police arrested 29-year-old Christopher Crowley, charging him with criminal homicide. We are angry because his life was snatched from him, but we want, we want people to know that this was a loving man with a great heart. Anita Crawley and Robin Thompson hold each other's hands for strength, remembering their cousin for the way he lived his life. He loved his music. He would sit on my love seat with his headphones on with some shades. Every time he saw me, he gave me these great big bear hugs. I would miss that the most. He wasn't homeless. He just wanted him Robert Mitchell, defined by the love of family and friends, rather than his time on the street. You just think that there's somebody on the street, but that's not true. That is somebody's family member. That's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter, brother, sister, cousin, friend. Joe Avery, Nashville's News 2.